Joining us now is Rick Dyer. Rick is president of RDI Video Systems, and Rick was the wrong responsible for Dragon's Lair. And joining Rick is Jay Eagle, executive vice president of Proton, and Jay is involved with the audio and video elements of Halcyon, an incredible new system we're going to see in just a moment. Stuart, what do you become, an airline pilot, or what is this piece of headgear you have? <laughs> no, actually, I'm about to communicate with this machine, Halcyon, we have out here. And you, okay. you get these guys to explain it, and then I'll talk to them. Good. Well, so far, we've talked about uh, two uses of laser storage technology. One is in, in video in a shoot 'em up style game. The second one was in uh, mass storage with the CD-ROM. Uh, Rick has had uh, a machine under development here for some time. I read about in the technical press called the Halcyon, and I'd like to have him explain to us what he's got. Halc Halcyon is basically, some, well, it's hard to communicate to, some, to the people that have never seen the product because there's nothing to relate to it. I guess the best way would be to use, uh, if, if you remember the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, there was a computer in that movie called HAL. And with HAL, you were able to, to talk to HAL. HAL could talk back to you. HAL would recognize your voice and say your name. HAL had intelligence. He could learn, and he could control functions uh, within his environment. And that's what HAL is all about. That's what okay, so the about. elements of Halcyon that uh, are similar to HAL, let's say, would be the speech recognition, the speech uh, synthesis, and uh, some form of uh, intelligence and learning. That's correct. Going on. Okay, good. Now, how important is the laser disc component to this? Is the laser disc just carrying the pictures here or the logic? The, the laser disc is really carrying both. Um, it, it contains information uh, where how the computer is, is presenting you with situations you have to think and make the, the decisions as far as how you want to handle them. Okay, now this I understand is the very first time you're actually showing off Halcyon on television anywhere. Let's get going. Show me what this thing can do. Okay, I think maybe the first thing is we'll just turn him, turn him off and turn him on. Um, as, as you re remember, you were talking with Hal before, so now when, when we turn him on, all you have to do is say your name. He will recognize your voice and recognize who okay. you are. Okay. So. Welcome to Halcyon. Do you want to play Sayers West? Yes. Yes. If I have your voice print, please say your name or else press an EP. Stuart. Nice to see you again, Stuart <laughs> Chefe. And I call you Stuart. Yes. Yes. Okay, Pretty Stuart. Impressive. A little bit Last familiar. I do play here for was 764. It's referring to the last time. That's right. I did pretty poorly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Please insert this for part one of Sayers Quest. And now we'll see some pictures, Rick. You'll continue right where you left off. Okay. Okay. Now, what uh, what you've done is really combined some technologies that have really been around. Well, you've got uh, the recognition of speech, a uh, trainable speech recognizer is something that's available today, and also the speech synthesis is also something that's available. So you've combined in a package here that really makes a a story and uh, uh, what is that unique part of it? Well, first of all, I think the speech recognition is the most advanced speech recognition that's ever been put on the marketplace. Yes, there has been speech recognition. There has never been speech recognition of the high caliber that this has. It has the ability to understand up to a 200-word vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Take this staff to the fairy circle in the forest and give it to the fairies. So, as you can okay, see... Now, now, that's me, sort of. I'm the character in this that's story. That's right. You're that character. And I've got, and I've got a choice now. Sorry, Hal. <laughs> Let's go to the forest clearing. One. What? One. Speak consistently, Stuart. One. Sir. Two. Two. Is that okay? I mean, <laughs> sure. I'll try this different story. Then. Oh, fellow. Who are you? Nigel the Huntsman. I know much of these woods. For example, I know that the crystal of Lothar will enable you to overcome the familiars. Come back sometime, and I'll share a story with you. So the character just gave you some information. Okay, and we're not moving linearly through the story then, right? I mean, it's branching depending on what That's happens. That's correct. Mm -hmm. again. When you're talking, he's listening to you. <laughs> Sorry, Hal. You want me to unplug you so he can Yeah, sure. Hear I think we've gotten that plug. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, what, uh, what sort of learning uh, goes on with uh, Halcyon? Uh, Halcyon learns what, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses, what you like, 
Um, and, and as you get involved in, in this adventure, uh, whatever it is, whether it's, uh, it's learning history or playing football or in a fantasy like this, uh, he will ask you questions and, uh, and, and learn about you. And, and as you go through time, and the more you interact with him, the more he learns about Pam, you as a personality. Is there, is there artificial, you were mentioning a, 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 that there was some artificial intelligence use in, in the machine. Does it actually extrapolate or anything beyond uh, just beyond uh, Well, it asks questions from you, and it learns mm -hmm. based on your so answers. It recognizes the words that you've... Uh, now, each time that you, you come up, another user comes up, then you train it for a, se a separate set of words. Answer. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when, it, when I was talking to it, it, it knew my history from the previous playing session to some degree. That's right. Mm -hmm. What applications are there? I mean, this is a fascinating, sophisticated adventure game, but what applications would there be for Halcyon beyond that? Um, I think maybe I think that, that the relationship to uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey and the HAL 9000 computer is applicable here too for future applications of the technology because as HAL in the spaceship was able to control the environment in which he operated through communications and by the way communications were conversation with the human element the same thing will happen in Halcyon technology the next generation of uh, applications will clearly be communication between the user the consumer who operates Halcyon and the ability for Halcyon to control the audio video system, open and close the doors. It has a calendar clock built in, so Halcyon, so for example, could... So you're saying basically this is the tip of the iceberg. That is a, this is the starting point. We certainly don't want to promote it as, as a Hal uh, or an AI machine in that sense. At this, at this point, what you're basically doing is, is getting things rolling in a, in a sense of speech well, recognition, Hal, Hal synthesis, already, and so forth. Hal already has the artificial intelligence. Uh, what Jay was referring to is that uh, Hal has already designed into him the ability to interface with any home computer or external peripheral or mm -hmm. device that he can control or get information from or give information to. Right. So it's available in real time. But, now. For, but for the, in a sense, for the tradition, what we call traditional AI, it really doesn't satisfy that criterion now. It's a, a sense of, of real intelligence. It would, I think that would be fair to say, wouldn't it? I think to the degree that intelligence, intelligence is necessary for it to be useful in many ways to the consumer, it has real artificial intelligence. And in fact, to the point where what we tr typically think of as a robot, which is a little creature that goes around the wheels and sweeps dust off the, that kind of picture of a robot, mm -hmm. this is a true robot. It, it, it serves the user in any number of ways that you choose to have it control or help you control your environment through conversation. Just That's the best kind of robot, <laughs> without wheels. It's a good, good, real good starting point. It's a very impressive mm -hmm. machine. Uh, briefly, we have about 30 seconds. There's a history application you have on this. Explain that, Rick. Uh, the history is uh, Voyage to the New World. It's about um, the history of John Cabot, who lived in 1498. But you learn history by going back in time and actually becoming a part. You, go on, you, you are on the ship. Okay, pretty fascinating Very stuff. Nice. Hal Young, we'll play with you and talk with you <laughs> later. Now, how far will laser discs and computer technology go? We have some thoughts from commentator Paul Schindler. How far are laser discs going? Well, this one is going to go into my compact disc player. I'm replacing my records with compact discs just as quickly as I can. And when laser discs become available as a computer peripheral, I'm going to start replacing my floppies. If you'd like a peek into the future of laser discs in the computer business, have a look at what compact discs are doing to the record business now. Let me show you. This is my current Brandenburg Concertos. It's an LP. There's a lot of noise on there besides the music. It's bulky. If I get my fingers on it, I ruin it, and it's only got 30 minutes of music on a side. This is my new compact disc version. And what a great name. It's so compact. Bach never sounded better. It's got an hour's worth of music. It doesn't matter if I put my fingers on it. Now, this is the floppy disk that we're all familiar with. It's just like the LP. You can wear it out. If you get your fingers on it, you're going to ruin it. I think laser disks are going to do to floppies what compact disks are doing to records. And that is to say it's going to replace them. But you can't write on a compact disk, you say. Well, by the 1990s, read, write, Laser disc units are going to make floppy disks just about as popular as punched paper tape is today. That's my opinion. I'm Paul Schindler.